in the new era, thought itself will be transmitted by radio. Have I done the world good, or have I added a menace? The coming of the wireless era will make war impossible, because it will make war ridiculous. I am proud to be a Christian. I believe not only as a Christian, but as a scientist as well. A wireless device can deliver a message through the wilderness. In prayer the human spirit can send invisible waves to eternity, waves that achieve their goal in front of God. Every day sees humanity more victorious in the struggle with space and time. Long experience has taught me not always to believe in the limitations indicated by purely theoretical considerations. These, as we well know, are based on insufficient knowledge of all the relevant factors. We are just entering what may be called, the field of vibrations, a field in which we may find more wonders than the mind can conceive of. If we consider what science already has enabled men to know the immensity of space, the fantastic philosophy of the stars, the infinite smallness of the composition of atoms, the macrocosm whereby we succeed only in creating outlines and translating a measure into numbers without our minds being able to form any concrete idea of it we remain astounded by the enormous machinery of the universe. The more I work with the powers of nature, the more I feel God's benevolence to man, the closer I am to the great truth that everything is dependent on the eternal creator and sustainer, the more I feel that the so-called science, I am occupied with, is nothing but an expression of the supreme will, which aims at bringing people closer to each other in order to help them better understand and improve themselves. The crux of the matter, is that people don't understand the true nature of money. It is meant to circulate, not be wrapped up in a stocking. The mystery of life is certainly the most persistent problem ever placed before the thought of man. There is no doubt that from the time humanity began to think it has occupied itself with the problem of its origin and its future which undoubtedly is the problem of life. The inability of science to solve it is absolute. This would be truly frightening were it not for faith. Thanks to the high standing which science has for so long attained and to the impartiality of the Nobel Prize Committee, the Nobel Prize for Physics is rightly considered everywhere as the highest reward within the reach of workers in natural philosophy. Religious faith to W. H. Bragg was the willingness to stake his all on the hypothesis that Christ was right, and test it by a lifetime's experiment in charity. You will also allow me to thank the Academy for inviting me to lecture in Stockholm, for its hospitality, and for the opportunity afforded me for admiring the charm of your people and the beauty of your country. I am glad to have this opportunity of expressing my high appreciation of the honor extended to me many years ago by the Royal Swedish Academy of Science by enrolling me amongst its members. This new form of communication could have some utility. Necessity is the cause of many inventions but the best ones are born of desire. The coming of the wireless era will make war impossible, because it will make war ridiculous. If we consider what science already has enabled men to know, the immensity of space, the fantastic philosophy of the stars, the infinite smallness of the composition of atoms, the macrocosm whereby we succeed only in creating outlines and translating a measure into numbers without our minds being able to form any concrete idea of it, we remain astounded by the enormous machinery of the universe. It was shortly after midday on December 12, 1901, in a hut on the cliffs at St. John's, Newfoundland, that I placed a single earphone to my ear and started listening. The receiver on the table before me was very crude, a few coils and condensers and a coherer, no valves, vacuum tubes, no amplifiers, not even a crystal. I was at last on the point of putting the correctness of all my beliefs to test. The answer came at 12.30, suddenly, about half past 12 there sounded the sharp click of the tapper, unmistakably, the three sharp clicks corresponding to three dots sounded in my ear. Can you hear anything? Mr. Kemp? I asked, handing the telephone to my assistant. Kemp heard the same thing as I, 
I knew then that I had been absolutely right in my calculations. The electric waves which were being sent out from Poldhu, Cornwall, England, had traveled the Atlantic, serenely ignoring the curvature of the earth which so many doubters considered a fatal obstacle, I knew that the day on which I should be able to send full messages without wires or cables across the Atlantic was not far distant. The mystery of life is certainly the most persistent problem ever placed before the thought of man. There is no doubt that from the time humanity began to think it has occupied itself with the problem of its origin and its future which undoubtedly is the problem of life. The inability of science to solve it is absolute. This would be truly frightening were it not for faith. Quotes by others about Guglielmo Marconi Marconi is a good fellow. Let him continue. He is using 17 of my patents. Nikola Tesla I am about to tell Jonah about the safari dad's going to take me on, but Mrs. Marconi says talking's like ping pong, you take turns, David Mitchell. Professor Ayrton said that we were gradually coming within thinkable distance of the realization of a prophecy he had ventured to make four years before, of a time when, if a person wanted to call to a friend he knew not where. He would call in a very loud electromagnetic voice, heard by him who had the electromagnetic ear, silent to him who had it not. Where are you? He would say. A small reply would come, I am at the bottom of a coal mine, or crossing the Andes, or in the middle of the Atlantic. Or, perhaps in spite of all the calling, no reply would come, and the person would then know that his friend was dead. Think of what this would mean a real communication from a distance based on true physical laws. His prophecy of cell phones, as a comment on Marconi's paper, sent on wireless telegraphy, read before the Society of Arts, May 15, 1901, about his early radio signal experiments. The forces of nature, such as electricity for instance, were not discovered by men who started out with the set purpose of adapting them for utilitarian purposes. Scientific discovery and scientific knowledge have been achieved only by those who have gone in pursuit of it without any practical purpose whatsoever in view. Heinrich Kurtz, for instance, never dreamt that his discoveries would have been developed by Marconi and finally evolved into a system of wireless telegraphy. On February 12, 1931, Marconi personally introduced the first Vatican radio broadcast by a pope, Pope Pius XI. With Pius XI standing beside him at the microphone, Marconi stated, With the help of God, who places so many mysterious forces of nature at man's disposal, I have been able to prepare this instrument which will give to the faithful of the entire world the joy of listening to the voice of the Holy Father.